Um, appreciate this opportunity once again to stand before you and bring a portion of God's Word and uh, fill in for Brother Steve this week, of course, and uh, next week, uh, where he'll be going uh, to Europe. And I believe he's starting in the book of Joel a couple weeks from now. So, um, I'd like to speak this morning on born again. So, if you open up your Bibles to John chapter 3, we're going to look at some uh, language that God has there for us. Okay, I'm going to read verses 1 through 8 right now. John chapter 3, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily be I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeneth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell when it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now, I want to start by first bringing out um, this, this term, born again. And I looked in the Greek here, my concordance, and this word in John chapter 3, verse 3, where the Lord Jesus says, you must be born again. That word born in the Greek means to procreate, regenerate, birth, Bring forth, it's used in a physical sense and as well as a spiritual sense. And I'll show you examples from the scriptures. Let's look at the physical sense. If you turn to Hebrews chapter 11, or if you just want to listen to me uh, read the verse, that's fine. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, that's the same Greek word, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So there's a physical sense. In Romans chapter 9, start with verse 11, it says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, and that word born is the same word over in John 3, uh, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as is, as is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have hated. Okay, now let's look at the spiritual birth, how, how God uses that word. In uh, 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, in verse 9, same Greek word, it says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. So there you have the spiritual birth. And it's the same Greek word applied to physical and spiritual. Also in John chapter, 1 John chapter 5, verse 1, Whosoever believeth that Jesus Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. And then also in verse 4, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So there's a two examples of the physical and the spiritual birth. Now going back to John 3, this word again in the Greek means from above, upward, or above. So born from above, in other words. It's the same word, if you look over in John chapter 3, verse 31, it's the same word translated uh, above there. That word again in John 3, 3, it's translated above in John 3, 31. He that cometh from above is above all. 
He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Okay? So we have an example right there of what these Greek words mean in the scriptures. Now the physical birth and the spiritual birth is all the works of God. Okay? And we're going to look at these things. Now, one thing I found in scripture that we, um, some things we can't understand fully. And this is one of them, the, sp the spiritual birth and the physical birth. And if you go to Ecclesiastes, we don't know who God's elect are, and we sure don't know how everything's formed in the womb of a, of a woman. And, uh, and that's exactly what Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5 teaches. It says, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. So there's some things that, uh, that God keeps us, uh, of course, we can't say, hey, there's one of God's elect, let's go bring the gospel to him, or something like that. See, and, and we just don't know these things. But um, uh, in Deuteronomy 29 and 29, I'll read this verse. Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says there, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Okay? So there's some secret things that belong just to the Lord. And um, uh, perhaps Judgment Day. Jesus says, No one knows the day nor the hour. And, and, and yet, you know... Um, that could be one of them. Um, but the spiritual birth and the physical birth, as, as I read in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, um, he says, we know it's not some of these things, okay? So with that in mind also, let's, I want to bring out a contrast now between the physical birth and the spiritual birth. And it will give us some insight into the nature of salvation, okay? So we're going to first look at some language that God uses on the physical birth. Now we know that first it takes the seed of the man must be planted in the woman, okay, to, to bring forth a physical birth. And in Leviticus chapter 12, Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 12 and verse um, 2. It says there, speak unto, the uh, yeah, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and notice that language, conceived seeds, because we're going to get into the spiritual birth, and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of separation for her infirmity, she shall be unclean. But what I want to get at is conceived seed. Okay? Now, God is the one that that causes conception. And over in Psalms chapter um, 139, we read in verse 13 and 14 there, it says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that thy, my, thy soul knoweth right well. So we know that Physical birth is all the works of God. You and I had nothing to do with coming into this world, correct? And so that little baby in the womb didn't make a choice, didn't make a decision. It, this is all God's work, okay? And so now, that's the physical birth. So we're going to parallel this with the spiritual birth. Just keep in mind, that little baby had nothing to do with being born. It took the seed to be implanted in the woman, implanted in the woman, and God causing conception and bringing forth the child, okay? So going back to chapter 3 of the Gospel of John, we're going we're gonna to look at this um, spiritual birth, or actually um, the spiritual application of, of the scriptures. Now, God uses in his word... Um, historical events. He could use healings. 
names, words, numbers, all describing a spiritual teaching. Okay? And so, for example, um, let's see. Um, well, I lost my train of thought here. I've got so much writing here, I can't even read my own writing. But whatever, some, whatever the context is, it could be the gospel, it could be the tribulation period, it could be Satan and his dominion. Whatever it might be, God uses language or illustrations to point a spiritual application or spiritual teaching. So these things, as the Bible puts it, are hidden. They're underneath. Okay, and, and we have to dig, we have to search the scriptures, compare spiritual with spiritual, and, and God the Holy Spirit reveals these truths to us. So going back to uh, John 3 in verse 1, we're going to look at this spiritual application or spiritual teaching that comes forth from these verses. In John chapter uh, 3 verse 1 it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now, this word in the Greek, Nicodemus, means victorious or victory. And it's derived from a same, the same word found over in 1 Corinthians 50, uh, 15, verse 55, where it says, So when this, um, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which give us, us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's derived from that same word as Nicodemus. So Nicodemus means victorious or victory. And we're going to see here this language that God has for us. Some of the questions that are asked here and how God, the Lord Jesus, responded to these questions. Okay? First of all, also, uh, not only we brought out the Greek of Nicodemus, but look at verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night. Now, why is God telling us this man came to Jesus by night? Now, perhaps in that day it could have been the, the fear of the Jews, his peers or whatever. But comparing spiritual with spiritual, we're going to look at this, this, this night, why he came at night. And this word um, where it says he came to Jesus, is the same Greek word in John 6, 44, where, where the Bible says, No man could come to me. This word came is the same Greek word come. No man could come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. So here we have Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Now, in the scriptures, the night, as Brother Tom was bringing out, the, the dominion of darkness, night is, a, is a, uh, a picture or a type of Satan's dominion. And this is where we're at before we're born again. We are in darkness. We are, we are children of the night, so to speak. Okay? And I'll give you some biblical uh, examples here. If you go to John chapter 11, and we're going to look at this, this night or darkness. In John chapter 11, verse 9 and 10 there, it says, And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. Okay? And then also in um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, it says in verse 4 and 5, it says, uh, But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. You see the contrast there? So everybody before we're born again is in Satan's kingdom is in the dominion of darkness. And that's why uh, what Brother Tom read in Colossians 1.13, it says, um, we are translated. It says, whom have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay? So Nicodemus comes to the Lord Jesus at night. And the word, no man could come to me unless the Father draw him. 
Okay? So keep all this in mind. We're looking at the spiritual teaching, the, the gospel that perhaps is shining through these verses as, as we compare spiritual things with spiritual. Now, in this, uh, uh, and perhaps, uh, you know, later on, Nicodemus, uh, it appears that he became born again. When you read John chapter 7 and John chapter 9, the language there uh, really, as you compare spiritual, really shows that Nicodemus became a child of God. But, and especially here with some of this language. But now, in verse uh, 2, let's read this again. It says, And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man could do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, did Nick, uh, in verse 2, do you read that? Why did Jesus answer him this way? He, he just said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that do us, except God be with them. And, and the Lord Jesus says, you've got to be born again. Verily, verily, I say to you, you must be born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God. And I was praying, Lord, what, is, you know, what does that mean? Why did the, why'd you answer him that way? And, uh, and as I did my word study, I thought, there it is right there. This word in John chapter 3 and verse 3, this word see in the Greek, it means to know, perceive, understand. It's the same Greek word in John chapter 2 where Nicodemus says, we know. And Jesus is saying, you don't understand. You don't know. You must be born again in order for you to know. And that's why the Lord uh, answered him this way. And he's saying, yeah, we know. It's no different than somebody if we know that they have a false gospel and they're saying they're saved, you see. And, and we just say, no, we need to be born again. It's similar to that. He's saying he knows, but he doesn't. And he doesn't perceive, he doesn't understand the, the things he's not he has not entered the kingdom of God he needs to be born again and so um, this is why I believe uh, the scriptures teaching here that Jesus answered him this way you you must be born again or you you, you can never understand the kingdom of God and uh, uh, perceive it or um, what was the or know it and now going on to verse um, four. He makes uh, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? And that's another different kind of statement. Why, why is that recorded for us in the scriptures? Uh, but we're going to see why it is. Now, first of all, I want to comment on the, his 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 uh, his reaction or his um, his comment to what the Lord Jesus says in, in verse 3. He says, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time in his mother's womb and be born? Now the natural man looks looks at things in a physical sense. Okay? In first in first Corinthians, I'll read this in chapter two, it says this. But now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, compared spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Okay? And so when we become born from above or born of God, we have the mind of Christ. And so his, his, his response was, how can I enter my mother's womb a second time and be born? Physical sense. Okay? And, and I'll give you another example of, a, of somebody giving their, 
the uh, physical sense of, of um, not understanding the Lord, what he meant. In John chapter 2, Jesus answered and said unto him, Destroy this temple, in verse 19, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? And he spoke of the temple of his body. You see how they, they used the physical? He thought it was a physical building, a temple. And then uh, I'll give you one more illustration. In John chapter 6, in verse 51, Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How could this man give us his flesh to eat? See, there's another example that he thought it was his flesh. But if you look at verse 63, it says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And so... Uh, it's no wonder, even today, how, how the physicalness, uh, in the physical sense, is brought out. Maybe there's the group of people that, that hold to a, a political kingdom in Jerusalem. Uh, the J JWs, they hold to 144,000 literal people. Um, they take the thousand years as a literal, um, in a literal sense. And so, this is all, the, the, these are all man's, kind of uh, ideas, but not the mind of Christ, okay? And so, um, but we're going to look at this, this, uh, this spiritual teaching now, what Nicodemus said. So, going back to John chapter 3, he says, uh, we're going to look at the second part. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Okay, now we're talking about the new birth. We're talking about somebody being born from above. Who is this mother's womb, spiritually speaking, okay? So we go back to um, the book of Genesis. And we know that um, God causes the, the conception. God causes the birth. And I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself here. Well, I am. But um, we go back to Genesis chapter 17. We're going to look at this, this word um, of, about this mother, this, this comment that uh, Nicodemus made. In John seven, uh, Genesis 17, 16 and 19. It says there in verse 16, I will bless her and give her a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. And verse 19, it says, And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Now, Go to Galatians, and we're going to really tie all this together, and you'll see what I'm talking about here. Now, Sarah is a picture, as we're going to see, and I'm not going to bring that out just yet, but if you go over to Galatians, we'll see, we'll see what uh, she's a picture of. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 22. There it says, um, Which things are an allegory? For these... Well, let me see. Verse 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, for the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. That free woman is Sarah. Okay? But, and the son is Isaac. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by the promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which is generous to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Okay? Just as a mother brings forth the child, the church, Jerusalem, Sarah is to be a picture of the church. It brings forth the children of God. 
This is where the children is, are, are brought forth. And uh, that's why it says here, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Okay, now if you look up Jerusalem, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 9, it says, There came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So Jerusalem is the bride, the wife of the Lamb, the church. And, we, and, and is the mother of us all. We come, we're born from our mother's womb through the, spiritually speaking, through the church. That's why it says Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Not only that, but... Uh, Peter um, says the same thing about uh, Sarah in verse, um, 1 Peter 3 and verse 6. It says, Even Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and not afraid with any amazement. And, that's, and also, our Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 12 um, speaks about this, about the mother. In, in, um, in verse 46, he says, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then what said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, de desiring to speak with thee. And he answered and said unto him, and that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same as my brother, my sister, and my mother. Okay? It all ties together. So the church produces the children of God. God works through the seed of the gospel to bring forth every one of his elect. So Jerusalem is the mother of us all, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. And it's and it just the same as the physical. It takes the seed of a man, and there's... Is planted in the woman, God causes conception and brings forth the child. The seed of the gospel is planted into his elect. The woman produces the child because the gospel comes forth from the woman. or uh, it, uh, the, uh, the children of God come forth from this woman. And um, that's why the, uh, the Lord Jesus, or uh, in 1 Peter chapter, um, chapter 1, Peter says this, he says um, in verse 23, he says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And then in chapter uh, 2, verse 2, he says, As newborn babes des desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So it's, you have a beautiful picture of, of the physical birth and the spiritual. God does everything in the physical birth. He does everything in the spiritual birth. And so if you have any problem with how people become saved, you just think about the, the physical birth and ask yourself, what, what did you have to do with your physical birth? You see? Did you do anything at all? God caused the conception. He caused the birth. And so, but it took the seed. It takes the seed. And, and just in the same sense with the spiritual. It, God, you have to be born again, born from above. So it takes the gospel seed to any in, in individual, and he, and he brings them into the kingdom of God. Okay? And so it's a beautiful contrast here. And that's why uh, Jesus said, that's what's born of flesh is flesh, that's which is born of spirit is spirit. You see? And so we must be born again to understand these things and to be born uh, to enter into the kingdom of God. And so um, there's many verses about this seed. And I just I read one in 1 Peter. And then I also read earlier, I'll read again in 1 John. It says, uh, Whosoever is born of God did not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, if you have people tell you you can lose your salvation, that's not true. 
that my little daughter over there will oh I'll always be her father because my seed abides in her if you're a child of God and you've been born again you'll always be a child of God you'll never lose your salvation it's the same thing you know pastor has all those children he'll be the father of those children forever you know he can't say that's not my child he that his seed abides in them see so when our when we've been born again from our heavenly father from the seed of Christ we cannot lose our salvation it's 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 a sure thing and that we are a child of God. So um, I'll close there. Uh, there's a lot more to it. We'll try to work through these, uh, Lord willing, the, the rest of these uh, verses in John chapter 3. But um, um, you know, that verse, the verse that I read earlier about how the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. And, and I, you know, I, I, I don't have a big IQ and I can't, even talk English that way, I mess it up. But I'm thankful that, that the Lord shows me things in, his, in the word that uh, I can understand. So, thank you. <clears throat>